I'm curious about this one. Question for Paul. What was it like working with Deuce and Dominant and WWE? Also, get any stories on them and Cherry. I th- always thought they had one of the best theme songs. More of a guilty pleasure, but also I, <laughs> I will listen to that theme song. Yeah. I mean, in terms of gimmick presentation, I thought it was really strong. Um, I'm a huge fan of character stuff. And, you know, that's the wrestling that I grew up loving was characters. And so in terms of presentation, you know, they came out with like the car and they looked great. And the music um, <clears throat> was very fitting. You know, it wasn't like this generic uh, free domain bullshit. It's like trying to sound tough. And, uh, you know, so it was very fitting. And uh, I, I really enjoyed working with... Uh, with Domino and I, and I liked uh, working with Cherry as well. She was very quiet. She's a very sweet girl, but very quiet. Um, you know, she wasn't one to to really lend a bunch of ideas when we're putting stuff together, unless it was, you know, them presenting her in a position uh, like, you know, what if what if Cherry pulls the leg or, you know, and so she was very useful, and I I felt like they dropped the ball with her because you know i don't i don't remember seeing her in many if any singles matches um but she was very accomplished you know very accomplished uh, worker and and a great you know just a great person like she wasn't she was never a shit stir or, you know, involved in any drama or anything like that. And so, uh, and I think, I think Domino, uh, you know, Cliffy don't surf. I think he's super underrated and uh, a guy that was always pretty overlooked as a talent because he, he had the size and had a great look. He looked a lot like, um, now that I think about it, he reminds me a lot of, uh, Gosh, I'm blanking on the name, but in Halloween Five, James might know this, but in Halloween Five, uh, Tina's boyfriend, Mike. who, yeah, Mike, that's right. Mike. Domino reminds me a lot of Mike, not so much in being like a jerk, but he had the look. I mean, he almost looks like the actor, uh, but then he gets like the big prong in his head. You know, that's one of my favorite deaths in Halloween, and the whole franchise was. Him, you know, just loving his car and then seeing this big garden tool just like scratching his car. And he's like, what the? He's like, all right, man, you want to play trick or trick? And he's like, oh. and he gets that prong right in his head. It's so good. It's so good. But yeah, he, he reminds me of that character. Um, there's a reason I'm not talking about Deuce. Um, and it's because he was the complete opposite of the other two in that he always had an attitude and I don't know if it was just cause he felt like he had a lot to prove um, being second generation or, or whatever. Uh, but it's odd because when I was doing dark matches before I signed on with them, I had teamed with him. I want to say at least once or tw- at least once, but maybe twice um, and there was even a dark match that I had uh, before they let people in the building. This was in Dallas. And Johnny Ace had come up to me and wanted me to put, oddly enough, one of my trainers, Scott Putsky, and another local uh, Texas guy, Cedric of Hollywood. Um, he wanted me to do a tag match with those guys in the arena, empty for the boys uh, to test to, to, to like try them out. And I was thinking like, God, this is really strange. Like I'm not even a contracted guy, but the head of talent <laughs> is putting some faith in me and asking me to test out these two guys. One of them having been one of my trainers in Scott Putsky. Uh, and so he goes, just pick, pick one of the guy, pick one of the local guys. Uh, and I picked Snuka because we had had a good rapport and, you know, and we put them through a, a, a fun little tag match. And uh, 
yeah i mean it was odd so then fast forward years later to when we're working with them and he was just a very different guy and i don't know what all he was going through in his personal life but he was never uh he was never somebody that we were cracking jokes with or you know you were he, he was never somebody that i was looking forward to being in the ring with at that point i'll say that much and you know, there was speculation that, um, as far as I could tell, there was, I think, a time that Brian had come up to me and said that he had caught wind that Joey Mercury was putting it in his ear not to bump for us because we're smaller. And that really set Brian off and in turn kind of set me off where it was like, the fuck, you know, like this guy you know, you have Regal and Taylor bumping for us willingly, but this guy's not going to bump for us. So there's, you know, there were times when we would be, you know, running drop kicks, nailing them. And he would stagger over and like keep himself up with the ropes and just wouldn't bump for us. And I just, I thought that was uh, grossly unprofessional. And he he just wasn't, uh, uh, again, just not anybody I'd ever want to work with again and wasn't somebody that I looked forward to working with at all. But, but the other two Domino and Cherry, it was like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and the matches were easy. It wasn't like it was, you know, complex and all this stuff. It was just that there was kind of that sour note that you had to deal with, um, from having a douche in the match as we like to call them. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I I feel like I've heard similar things. Yeah, to, I I think everyone. Yeah, for him, but that's cool. You had good experiences with them overall. I agree. One of the better like put together packages teams. Sadly, not used. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he he could be responsible for that. I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Um, I know that when we dropped the belts to them, Team Malenka specifically had asked me to do the same bump that I did at the Rumble. Um. I think he wanted one of them to clothesline. He he would literally ask me to do the same Snitsky clothesline spot in the rumble. And that that would be what took me out. And I vehemently just was like, Nope, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. Um, not, not so much because I wouldn't do that for Domino. I, I sure as hell wouldn't do that for, for Snooker, but, um, but it was just because I felt that that bump lived and should have stayed and has stayed with that yeah. moment. And I didn't want to do that to Gene either. Um, I would never do that to, to Gene and take that away from him. So uh, I turned it down and I think I ended up just doing like a moonsault that I missed to my stomach on the floor. And that's what kept me down, like blah, blah, blah. So, um, Yeah. <laughs> Those were also like, those were a Michael Hayes project from what I understand. Like that was his idea and his, you know, his baby. So, you know, the writing was kind of on the wall early when they came on board that um, the emphasis was going to be on them and not us. And uh, even though I think, you know, we went over on them in a pay-per-view once at the early part of that feud, but I don't know. I when I think back to the to the many matches that we had and the different teams that we worked with, that's that's usually not um, a team that I think like, oh yeah, it was such good times and such good matches, and and it's because of him, you know, unfortunately. But um, but whatever, you know, he he's more known for dropping Undertaker on his head, I guess, uh, being a cameraman at Mania, so. Well, Ben, you got your money's worth out of that question. Yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, right. How much money?